वेलकम यू ऑल टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ स्किल रचना इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर द अनलिमिटेड एंड फ्री प्रैक्टिकल नॉलेज अबाउट द कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी आर गोट टू डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉलम डिजाइन वी विल बी कवरिंग ऑल द प्रोस्पेक्ट ऑफ द कॉलम इन द थ्री वीडियो इट विल बी लाइक अ मूवीज लाइक पार्ट वन पार्ट टू पार्ट थ्री एंड बिलीव मी यू आर गोइंग टू गेट ऑल द नॉलेज अबाउट द डिजाइन बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट लोड कैलकुलेशन एवरीथिंग into the sequence or the series of the videos so let me talk about the first video that is this video in this video we are going to learn all the basic concepts practical concepts about the column starting from the is code norms to the issue we faced while designing or placing the column onto the architectural drawing we are going to discuss all your basic queries like what should be the dimensions of the column what should be the maximum distance between the column etc and etc in the second video we will be calculating all the loads on the column one by one from slab beam brickwork etc and the third video which is going to be also very very interesting we will be designing the column for parking plus four floor building taking care of practical concerns or i can say in other language as per the needs of the client so let's start with our first video if i'm going to ask you column is a compression member or A tension member. Many of you say the right answer that is the compression member. We are aware that concrete is good in compression and bad in set tension. So when column is a compression member and concrete is taking the compression, so the question arises: Why steel used in concrete? So let's see why exactly the steel used in the concrete. So let's try to find out why we are using the steel in the column. so i in simple sense i can say for doing the reduction in the size reduction in the size means as steel is good in compression and help us to reduce the size of the column member because it also take care of the compression right and second is the eccentricity in the loading there is always a eccentricity of the loading on a column it may be due to the flushing of the beam at the outer edge of the column or different beam depth are resting on a column so as we were going to design by putting this is a centric of the loading but its actual kit is not going to take care so to take care of the all the phenomena we are using the steel bar now let's have a fact check that whenever we are going to design a column you are able to see something like this at the bottom right so basically these are known as a starter a starter for a column is the lowest part of the column which is cast before the casting of the whole column on the top of each floor normally the height is going to be 100 mm right so starter is required to be made before the casting of the column on every floor to make sure that size and measurements of the column is going to remain the correct as per the structural and architectural design of the building the main shuttering frame of the casting of the column is fixed on this starter base for casting of the whole column that is basically the whole purpose of the starter so in this video we are going to check out some of the interesting fact while doing the learning of the basic concept now let me talk about the is code provisions for the column which is very very important the first and the most simple one is the clear cover for the column is 40 mm in particular site conditions or some of the sites we generally go for 50 mm also but it depends on site to site condition but as per the is code the minimum clear cover should be 40 mm you can't provide less than 40 mm into the column the next important point is the maximum distance between the two bars in a column is 300 mm along the periphery means if i'm going to talk about the longitudinal bar the center to center maximum distance between the two longitudinal bar can be 300 mm means if i'm going to integrate these two points of the is code i can state that if i'm going to take from one side the clear cover is 40 mm the maximum distance between the rebar is 300 mm and on the other side that is a 40 mm so total if i'm going to add is 380 mm so whenever if any of the column dimension is increasing more than 380 mm i need to add one more rebar at a part right so that i can easily interpret from this is code points we are having a lot of dias of the bar available into the market but as per the is standards minimum diameter of the main reinforcement should be 12 mm you can't use 10 mm into the peripheral uh, reinforcement of the column 
moving to the next part of the IS code, which is very, very important. And this point we are also going to use while doing the design. So minimum and maximum percentage of steel in column is the minimum is 0.8% and the maximum steel percentage you can take is the 6%. But the important learning is that the structural engineer or the consultant try to prefer the maximum percentage steel can be used in the column is 3% to make that the flow of the concrete should be comfortably done and it not feel any kind of a difficulty in the flowing of the concrete. So in, in our case, when you are doing the practical case, we will try to keep as a 3%. Next, the minimum number of the bars. If I'm going to talk about a rectangular column, it will be four numbers. If I'm going to talk about a circular columns, it will be a six in numbers. Each main bar need to be tied with the links in two direction to prevent the buckling in those direction. Now let's uh, go for a checking of the facts. Now, when I am talking about a high rise building, right? So we now in, in India also we are going for a 60 floor, 70 floor building, right? Particularly in the metro or cosmopolitan cities. So when we are going for a high rise building, so there is a lot of steel has been wasted while doing the overlapping, right? Whenever we are doing the lapping of the rebars, because we know that in India we are uh, rebars are available into the length of 12 meter. So when I need to go for a very high rise building, I need to do the lapping of the rebar. So while doing the lapping of the rebar, there is a lot of wastage has been occurred in the rebar, right? So what is the solution? Nowadays, we are using this kind of element to do the lapping of the rebar. So what exactly that they are the rebar couplers, right? They look like this. So other than going doing for a lapping of the rebar, we can easily put the lapping with a very less rebars additionally required. So it is going to be a very, very economical also. And it also going to reduce the self weight of my structure so somewhere it is going to be economical in all the prospects so let's come to the very very important part of the video why i'm saying the important part because in this part we are going to clear our basic concepts about the column let it be while doing the execution of the column or designing of the column or while placing the column onto the architecture plan we are going to sort out basic questions one by one the first question the most asked question to me is that if I am moving with the respect to the height of the building, right? Means I am moving with the multi-story building, I am moving with the height of the building. So the column size should be increase or decrease or it should be remain the same. So for answering the same, we need to understand the basic pattern of the load distribution of the structural member. We know that the load will be moved from the slab to the beam, to the column and to the foundation and then we will go to the hard starter. So let me take a very simple example. Let me take a case of a 30 story of a building. So if I'm talking about a 29th floor, so the load of the complete 29th floor will be taken care of the beam, right? From that beam, the load will be moved to the slab. Similarly, when I'm talking about a 28th floor, so the complete load of that particular floor of a 28 will be taken care of by the beam and then it will be transferred to the column. So we are understanding for a particular floor, the load will be taken by the particular floor beam only and that beam will be going to transfer the load to the column. So when the, I am talking about a 28th floor column, it is taking care of the load of that particular 28th floor and even of the above floor, that is 29th floor and even the 30th floor. So in nutshell, we are understanding as I am moving downward, the load is increasing on my column. So when the load is increasing, the dimension should be more. So in reverse way, if I need to talk about, as I am moving with the respect to the height of the building, the column size can be decreased. Okay, now move to the second part of the question. That how we are going to freeze the dimension of the column or how to decide the dimension of the column. So answer, answer is very, very simple. We need to understand the dimension of the column will be completely fixed on the load calculation. So we have already seen into the part of our video. Now we know that what is the minimum dimension of the column as per the IS code that is 230 by 230 mm, right? So whenever we need to freeze the dimension, we need to take care of the very important proportion. We are talking about the least lateral dimension of the column and the largest lateral dimension of the column. So when we are talking about the proportion, we need to take care of that. The smaller dimension to the larger dimension should not be more than 2.5 terms or 2.5 to 3. It should not exceed in any particular or simple case more than 3 times. Means for example, if the least lateral dimension is a 230 mm, so it should not be more than the other dimension of the column should not be more than 230 multiplied by 3. That we need to take care of. Now moving to the third and most important part of the question. How much far the column can be from each other? 
right? What is the maximum distance or the minimum distance we can place the column into our building? So let's talk about a very simple case. The answer for this particular question, which is going to be many of you are into having into your mind, the answer is you can go any of the length means there is nothing like a prescribed limit you can say that is the maximum distance you can go with the column because let me talk to you very simply said simply uh, language you have seen into the residential building sometime the distance from the column to column is 4 meter 5 meter or 6 meter 7 meter when you are going for some kind of a big bigger halls or a commercial building you have seen 12 meters 15 meters you have gone for marriage halls go downs you have seen 18 meters 20 meters so we are able to see there is a huge distance difference between the distance of the column now the concept is that how to decide that what will be the maximum distance i can go for my structure now the criteria for decide there are so many factors is going to depend on definitely it may be the load calculation the beam depth i can go for but the most important factor which you need to keep in the mind is economy of the structure the distance which you can freeze the maximum distance you can keep into your plan or into your structure is will be completely depend on the economy of the structure. Let me talk about the minimum distance. Generally, when you're talking about a residential building, we try to keep that the distance between the columns should not be less than three meters. Only a particular case like a staircase or it may be a WC or toilet where the sunken slab is there and load is more. So that time only we are going for a less than three meters. But in all other cases, we try to keep a distance at least more than three meters. Right? And maximum distance we don't have a limit. The only thing is that we should understand how much should be the beam depth if I'm going to increase this span and whether my structure is going to be feasible in the terms of economical or not. So that we need to take care whenever we are going to freeze the maximum distance between the column. But you can simply take a thumb rule. Whenever you're going to freeze into the residential building, you can take a distance between four to six meter or maximum seven meter. You need to keep maximum distance in a residential kind of a building. If you learn something new from this video and really like this video, so kindly put the thumbs up and definitely watch the part two and part three of design of the column. And believe me, you're going to get the complete knowledge of the design of a column. So if you really like and you want to, you want to have access of the unlimited knowledge, kindly subscribe to our channel. Thank you all. See you in the next video.